Hello and welcome to NAFDAQ and Your Health. Every week on this program, we take you through different areas of NAFDAQ's activities geared towards ensuring that our health is protected. My name is Tosin Omolaja. Today, we kick off the program by joining the world to mark the International Drug Day. A day set aside to highlight the dangers of drug abuse and other issues related to drugs and its consumption. Today is uh, extremely important for us in Nigeria. Uh, first because of the increase in drug substance abuse. In 2016 it was about 4.4% uh, among six, 15 to 64 year olds. Today it's about 14.5%. So this uh, day is extremely important and it should also continue to jolt us uh, to, be ha to have high alerts in terms of drug substance abuse in the country. Despite their attendant effects of COVID-19 on the socio-economic life of Nigerians across the country, NAFDAQ, as an agency of government, saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding the health of all Nigerians and residents of the country, continues to deliver on its mandate by ensuring that proper monitoring, surveillance, is undisrupted, even at this time. These activities have borne fruits as those who would stop at nothing to endanger the health of Nigerians by falsifying and adulterating drugs and other regulated products are being apprehended across the nation. The Investigation and Enforcement uh, Directorate is very very important to our mandate just like any other directorate but when we talk of the control of drugs investigation and enforcement and port inspection directorate both directories are heavily involved in control of drugs for example investigation and enforcement they've already arrested 162 suspects you know uh, from 2019 to, to, to date, uh, 166 seizures of different drugs illegally uh, brought into the country or unregistered. Uh, they've done a lot of uh, raids coming from informants or from just doing regular raids that they now that they do very well now, uh, and they also do raids on drug hawkers. Because people sell drugs or harbor medicines that they don't store at the right at the right temperature and that you didn't even register, and they also you know sell narcotics. So these are the types of uh, activities that uh, investigation and enforcement does. Uh, they also the that directorate also collaborate with Interpol, with different intelligence agencies in the world to ensure that drugs that are illegal or narcotics do not come into the country. Uh, they, they do a lot of prosecution. Uh, they do a lot of, of course, seizures. They do a lot of destruction. For example, last year, we destroyed Tramadol worth 1.7 trillion Naira. That is the street value. Uh, so all these things make up investigation and enforcement. A lot of raids, the latest is the raid that they the raid that they did in Ibadan uh, about two weeks ago, uh, where in a very private house, somebody was making medicines and putting the label of some companies in Nigeria on the bottles. So these are activities that, examples of activities that investigation and enforcement does on a daily basis. And it is continuous. It is not like, oh, we finished for this year, we will not again, because bad bad merchants do all this on a daily basis and we have to continue to step up in ibadan or your state capital the agency embarked on surveillance and raid of premises suspected to be a hub of medicine fakers and adulterators this was in response to the information received from a concerned citizen i want to commend the members of the public for their collaboration with navdac but for their information and intelligence we wouldn't have been able to get this counterfeiter in Ibadan who tells us that he's a lone wolf 
we know that he was working with some other people. But the fact is that getting this man means dismantling that chain. We carried out some surveillances and monitored the place for some time. Then on a set day, I was directed to lead a team of uh, NAVDAC officers to go and find out exactly what was happening in the prime in the place in Ebado or your state. So we took off and we got there. When we got to the place, we, we were hanging around around the place. We saw some labels and so we were assured that something was actually going in there. So we got into the place, into the house, and then we now noticed that it was a mini manufacturing plant. So many packaging materials, so many cartons, up to about 100 cartons of already produced known brands of pharmaceutical, mostly liquid pharmaceutical. And as we were going around, we found most of the, the like these bowls, there were liquid, the cough syrup was inside, inside the toilet, and a lot of uh, bottles soaked in big, uh, big uh, uh, drums, plastic drums. And as we are going around, like you see, we saw so much label, so much cork, so much packaging materials. Then we saw this uh, carton containing tramadol packaging, packaging for tramadol. And uh, a lot of them have been opened. Though we suspected that he was mixing the product with tramadol until we asked him and he confirmed truly he was mixing the what he was doing with tramadol just to have the narcotic effect of codeine so that when people take it they will be high then we now notice that most of the productions were done in a toilet two toilets one here one here plenty too much of the product so we now had to move out every single thing that had to do with the production the finished product the packaging materials the corks the empty bottles, we had to move them, and then we also moved his gadgets, which were mostly plastic bowls and the toner. This is what he used to obviously stir the or mix it with the tramadol to pour out to go and give to the public. So we now evacuated everything and we had to start going back to Lagos, having accomplished our mission. I was riding Okada. Along the line, I was carrying those guys, sent me to around to go and buy other cough syrup. I was told him, I was told them that that's what I'm doing before my business collapsed. Because suddenly I was tested, I was tested the what they are sending me to buy. I was now, nah, it's a certain is there now, okay? That's why I find out that make I go buy some syrup. And I label it with codeine, but codeine is not there, but it's expectorant. If I buy an expectorant like this, because the company cover will be will be there, I will remove the cover, and I will and I will tear the the sticker away, and I will open it and I will put it inside the clean bowl, and I will find 50 milligram of tramadol and I join it together. After that, I'll cook it and I put it on the water and I use the brush to clear the the piece cover, the, the name of this piece of I will use this one to clear it and I will put another sticker there. So I used to go to nightclub to go and sell it one one. Public should be aware that drugs are chemical substances that needs to be handled with care, else its adverse effect could be injurious to the health and may in turn lead to death. Meanwhile, getting it from a registered pharmacy could lessen the risk. The health implication of this cannot be overemphasized. To start with, this is a pharmaceutical product that should be manufactured according to CGMP. And now somebody is producing them in an environment 
that is contaminated and inside the toilet on top of that matter. And then the water, is the microbial load of the water, only God knows. The quantity of the number of coliforms and other microorganisms which could destabilize the whole system. Nobody can ascertain. Although we have sent the product to the lab and we're waiting for the lab analysis to see what is there. That is one. Then two, adding tramadol, which is a narcotic drug to products you are giving to children, to pregnant women, is of very, very dangerous to health because you don't know the quantity of, he cannot even ascertain the quantity of uh, how many milligrams of uh, tramadol per liter or per meal of the product he has. So people just take it and a child can take it and sleep until when. Then he is alleging that he sells to nightclubs. So it's also a lesson for people that buy this type of things in a uh, nightclub. Drugs are chemical substances and react with anything, the sunlight, the, the weather, and any other thing. So by the time this thing, somebody buys this thing and is taking it, the person is killing the systems of the, the organs of the body. He's disorganizing the organs of the body. And this could lead to a number of problems, which may include death. How can someone unknowingly pay for his death or her death? That's what we are being confronted with. This young man is going to be prosecuted. Who we'll let him go? Who we'll let him go? Because he's a danger to everybody. And for us at NAVDAC, counterfeiting anywhere is counterfeiting everywhere. That's how we see it. It's not about a location, it's about all of us. We are all in it together. So if we've, this type of young man cannot be tol tolerated, his activities, and more so, lives are involved. What is the price for life? What is the cost? It's inestimable. We'll take a short break now. Stay with us. Welcome back. Manufacturing of counterfeit, fake, and unwholesome drugs does not only have a detrimental effect on the health of the public, but also have numerous negative effects on the legitimate businesses whose products are being counterfeited, thereby putting the name of the company and survival of such manufacturers in jeopardy. This is not the first time they are catching fakers, faking our products. This should be the third time, if I remember. This is the third time they are catching fakers. So NAVDAC is really doing a good job and I will implore NAVDAC to keep it up because if these people are not being caught the way they are, it could put the company in trouble one way or the other. Production, distribution and sale of counterfeit, fake and unwholesome processed food, drugs and other regulated products to the public is a criminal act and it is a punishable offense under the law in Nigeria. We have the counterfeit and fake drugs and unwholesome processed foods, miscellaneous provisions at CAP C34, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. It prohibits the production, the distribution, and also the possession, among other activities, of fake and counterfeit uh, drugs as well as adulterated drugs, he carries 15 years imprisonment with an option of fine of 500,000, which we are saying no. That we have, we, we've, we've reported that to the, uh, to the government and the government is taking action. The National Assembly, there's something we have, uh, we, we've sent to them, a bill to review that provision. We are asking for life jail term for it, and not and not five hundred thousand. We we don't want a situation where a counterfeiter goes, and he puts the fine, envisaged fine, in his pocket, five 
500,000. You can easily carry 500,000. And in the present day, uh, what we have now is less than 2,000 US dollars. Someone will use, in, I mean, define. If the person feels that at the end of the day, this is what I will get for killing people and doing all sorts, he goes away with it. So you have that law. You also have the Miscellaneous Offenses Act, which also prohibits the adulteration of medicines. We also have the Food and Drugs Act. The Food and Drugs Act, CAP F32, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. It punishes, it prohibits the production and the distribution of fake and counterfeit uh, medical product, but not as strong as the counterfeit and fake drugs and unwholesome process uh, foods miscellaneous provisions act cap c 34 laws of the federation 2004. fake drugs are usually distributed through street trading open markets and other unregistered and unlicensed dispensing points we're advising people that if you want to buy medicines buy medicines from registered pharmacies where you are sure that if anything happens you can hold them responsible because it's not, the pharmacist has a license which he has to protect and will not go out of his way to give people what will kill them. Knowing that if, he's, if he or she is caught, he's answerable to it. But when you buy in open markets, you buy in nightclubs, you're on your own because we cannot trace anything to any uh, pharmaceutical company. And like this is just one of them. And so many of them also may be doing this, sending to other places, except when they are caught like this. That's when you know what they are doing. So people are advised to take their health as their own responsibility by getting their pharmaceuticals from the right uh, places. Poised to continually rid the nation of illicit drugs smuggled into the country by unscrupulous people. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFTAC, has continuously seized numerous containers of illegally imported tramadol and other illicit drugs. This bold step of seizing and destruction of tramadol and other narcotics from being distributed amongst the Nigerian public yields a positive result. It has reduced the distribution and sale because of the work we have done tremendously we it has reduced but we still have some pockets elements involved especially with some of these uh, hawkers that we have the agency wants against other forms of drug abuse that have become rampant in the country and are posing serious health and life changing and threatening dangers to users there's one they call uh, squishy there's one they call mon monkey, monkey tail. They do all sorts of concussion. Sometimes they use marijuana. They mix, they mix with um, tramadol and give it to people to drink and to take. You find the young ones, when they party, you have some of these mixtures. They take it, they use it to drug the girls in order to rape them and the rest. So you can see there's a correlation between some of these things and crime. And it's so serious. This is extremely important for us as an agency and we take it very, very seriously. If a young person or an adult is on drugs, they can steal, they can kill, they can become terrorists. NAFDAQ's role in stemming the tide of drug abuse in the country goes well beyond investigations, enforcements, and prosecutions. The agency also engages in several enlightenment and sensitization programs. From elementary school, we have to have a curriculum that will show the bad effects of drugs, how drugs can destroy brain, how drugs can destroy future, you know, so these are the things that you're supposed to do in the universities, secondary schools. For example, NAFDA has a, what is called the YADA program, Youth, Youth Against Drug Abuse. We, we partner with several, with many uh, secondary schools in the country. 
to make the children aware of the bad effects of drugs. Our narcotics division uh, directorate, uh, they have an outreach to the army where they go to the army schools, army children's schools in the barracks to teach them about the dangers of drugs. They work with the families and they also educate the mommy, mar mommy markets in the different barracks because you know that each sector in the society just like you said has their own problems you know uh, there are so many things that we do in NAVDA uh, in terms of in terms of coping drug abuse uh, drugs can be misused regular drugs can also be misused and that is where we come in pharmacists come in to educate our people if you get if you if you mom gets a drug from the doctor you do you shouldn't take that drug because you know you are you are ill or whatever you should get advice from the doctor there are drugs that are used medically but they can be misused it's time now to bring you the news that's on nafdac updates Safety measures to practice against COVID-19. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, implores Nigerians to strictly comply to the safety measures published by the Federal Ministry of Health and World Health Organization to ensure that the spread of the coronavirus is curtailed. Research is still ongoing to further understand the nature of the virus and provide vaccines for it. However, the public are advised to constantly maintain safety measures against COVID-19. Always wear face mask when you are outdoors. Wash your hands with soap and water as regularly as possible and use only NAVDAC approved alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Maintain social distancing. Avoid crowded places. Cover your mouth with your elbow when you sneeze or cough or use a clean tissue paper and ensure that it is disposed properly and immediately. For somebody to be sure that the mask is protective enough, the thickness is extremely important. Anybody that is going to be making masks now should choose the fabric carefully. If somebody has a barrier mask on, and another person uh, lights a cigarette lighter, for example, and that person can blow that cigarette lighter off. The barrier mask is not protective enough. If the person cannot blow that cigarette lighter off, then it is protective enough. It's a simple uh, test. And I believe that uh, people can easily do that. Uh, we are very good at, at making sure that things are OK if we are guided well. That's it on NAFDAQ Update. You've been updated. We have to go now, but we'll be back next week. In the meantime, we believe you may have questions, comments, or inquiries. We would love to hear from you. Always remember that safeguarding the health of the nation is our collective responsibility. So if you have information about fake and unwholesome food and drugs or activities that create them in your area, kindly let us know. You can reach NAFDAQ via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, please call 0800-162-3322 or email NAFDAQ at nafdaq.gov.ng. Till next week, stay safe.